I welcome you to the celebration this morning, my brothers and sisters, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We celebrate today the Feast of the Annunciation of our Blessed Mother, or the Feast of the Annunciation of the Lord to our Blessed Mother. Mary is the epitome of openness. Mary is the epitome of receptivity. Mary is the epitome of doing God's will. And so the Feast of the Annunciation is a celebration, you might say, of the start or the beginning of salvation history. It is through the Annunciation and from the Annunciation and the response of Mary when she said, Let it be done to me according to your word, that salvation history began, that the Lord could be in Incarnate, that the Lord could come into the world and that the Lord could save the world through his cross and through his resurrection. And so even though we are in the midst of Lent, even though we are in the midst of this turmoil which the whole world is going through because of COVID-19, we do not lose hope, we do not lose heart because our God is a God who cares. Our God is a God who loves. Our God is a God who will never abandon us. This is the hope that we must have. This is the courage with which we must face life. The courage that Mary herself had when she faced life and faced the angel and opened a heart to the revelation. And so we pray. That through the intercession of our blessed mother Mary on this feast of the Annunciation, like her, she might give us the grace, even in these troubling and challenging times, to be able to say to the Lord, let it be done to us according to your word. And for those times, we were not really open to God's word. Lord, have mercy. For those times, we preferred not to hear God's word. Christ, have mercy. And so for those times we were not as open as Mary was. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin. May he bring us all to everlasting life. And since today is a feast, even though we are in the season of Lent, we can glorify God with one heart and with one voice. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Father, as we come before you this morning on the feast of the Annunciation of the Lord to our Blessed Mother, we ask that through her intercession, we too receive the same grace of saying, Let it be done to us according to your will. We ask this 
through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. The first reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz and said, Ask the Lord your God for a sign for yourself, coming either from the depths of Sheol or from the heights above. No, Ahaz answered, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then he said, Listen now, house of David, are you not satisfied with trying the patience of men without trying the patience of my God too? The Lord himself, therefore, will give you a sign. It is this, the maiden is with child and will soon give birth to a son, whom she will call Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, here am I, O Lord, to do your will. Here am I, O Lord, to do your will. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law in the depth of my heart. Here I am, Lord, to do your will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. Here I am, Lord, to do your will. I have not hidden your justice in my heart, but declared your faithful help. I have not hidden your love and your truth from the great assembly. Here I am, Lord, to do your will. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Bull's blood and goat's blood are useless for taking away sins. And this is what Christ said on coming into the world. You who wanted no sacrifice or oblation prepared a body for me. You took no pleasure in holocaust or sacrifices for sin. Then I said, just as I was commanded in the scroll of the book, God, here I am, I am coming to obey your will. Notice that he says first, you did not want what the law lays down as the things to be offered, that is, the sacrifices, the oblations, the holocaust, and the sacrifices for sin, and you took no pleasure in them. And then he says, Here I am. I am coming to obey your will. He is abolishing the first sort to replace it with the second. And this will was for us to be made holy by the offering of his body, made once and for all by Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He came to her and said, Hail, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was deeply disturbed and wondered in her heart what this greeting might be. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. 
you have found favor with God. You are to conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said, But how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. That is why the child to be born of you will be called Holy, the Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived, and she who was called barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible to God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let what you have said be done unto me. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord Whenever we think of Mary, one word that comes constantly to mind is the word Amen. Mary is called the Amen of the Father. She is called the Fiat of the Father. She is called the Yes of the Father. The word Amen means let it be so. The word Amen can also mean I agree with you according to your will and the same word Amen is translated into Latin as Fiat which also means yes. So Mary is called the Amen of the Father, the Fiat of the Father or the Yes of the Father. However, if we hear and reflect on the response of Mary, we realize that she goes beyond a mere yes or fiat. Because she says to the angel, not I will cooperate with God, not I will collaborate with God, not I will join forces with God, but she says, let what you have said be done unto me. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let what you have said be done unto me. And this means that Mary is willing to be passively active or actively passive. She will go beyond collaboration and cooperation with God because she will let God do in her. She will be that vessel. She will be that instrument through whom God will work. And Mary knows that when God works through her, it will be infinitely better than if she were to do it herself. If God works in her, it will be infinitely better than if she were to join forces with God. And that is why her response is, let it be done to me. Mary becomes passively active or actively passive only because she wants constantly that God will do in her. This is the lesson of the Annunciation. And because Mary let God do in her, she was able to bring forth the greatest of all gifts, Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Today, on the Feast of the Annunciation, even as we are grappling with finding a cure for the pandemic of COVID-19, we turn to our Blessed Mother. We ask for her intercession in the words of that beautiful prayer, the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known 
that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy aid, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly to thee, O virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand sinful and sorrowful, O mother of the word incarnate. Despise not my petition, despise not our petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. Let it become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Let it become for us a cup of joy. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquity, cleanse us from our sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, merciful Father, along with these gifts of bread and wine, on the feast of the Annunciation of our Lord, the numerous time we have not been as open as our Blessed Mother was. As you transform this bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus, gift us with the gift of openness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just that we must praise and thank you in a special way this morning. Because you have opened our eyes to the realization that if we are open as Mary was, if we dare to say like she did, let it be done to us according to your word, you can work your designs in us. You showed this to us not only in the Annunciation, but you showed it to us when you brought Jesus into the world as our Savior, as our Redeemer, as our hope. For such a great gift as Jesus, we praise you along with the saints and the angels as we sing a song of joy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Send forth your spirit upon these gifts, we pray, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, dying you destroyed our death, rising you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Making present his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, 
this bread of life, this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, our bishops and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Mary and the Virgin Mother of God, whom we remember in a special way today, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Ignatius, St. Francis Xavier, we may be graced to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray now as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace today. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all kind of useless worry as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you are saying to us this morning, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the little faith we have. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. See, my brothers and sisters, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who was able to become incarnate because our Blessed Mother said, Let it be done to me. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that on the feast of the Annunciation of our Lord to our Blessed Mother, you have given us the only gift, the best gift that we will ever need, Jesus. We pray that with Jesus in us, like our blessed mother Mary, we might be able to keep saying to you, let it be done to us according to your will. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord is with you. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. May God our loving Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son, fill your hearts and homes with every good gift, grace and blessing. May Jesus, our risen Saviour, enflame your hearts with the gift of his unconditional love. May the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, be ever your advocate, your intercessor and your guide. May Mary give you her grace to say yes to God's will. May she place you as loving families near the heart of Jesus, her Son. May Almighty God bless each one of you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go to love God by saying like Mary did, Let it be done to me. A happy feast 
of the Annunciation of our Blessed Mother.